Hello, I'm Clinton from the EasyDIYSeries.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to lay these beautiful wooden floorboards, or also known as a floating floor. So, why is it called a floating floor? Well, it's not actually secured around the edge of the floorboards, and that's why it's actually called floating. There is underlay that you put down, but basically the whole floor is an independent system. From what I understand, historically, um, it was meant to be a floor system that was laid and could be removed when you wanted to take it with you and you moved house. But in this day and age, it's really uh, become an easy way of laying floorboards and really uplifting and modernizing the look of your home. So let's waste no more time. Let's jump into actually doing the job. Um, we're going to go through the usual three project phases. We're going to plan the job. We're going to buy the parts. And then we're going to actually do the install itself. Now for the planning phase of the project, you need to really understand each of the parts that are going to be used. So the first part is the underlay, which goes under the floorboards. So uh, for this underlay, um, if you're lifting up carpet and throwing it away, uh, it's not advisable to use the current underlay in your carpet because it's actually too thick and too springy. And the second reason is floorboard underlay is specific in that it has a moisture resistant layer. Now the reason for that is if moisture comes up from the concrete floor or through the ground, it will then get onto the wooden floorboards and can actually ruin them over many years. The floorboard underlay is also very thin, so um, it just creates just the right amount of spring when you're walking and actually it feels great and hence the name floating floorboards. The second major part is obviously the floorboards themselves. They come in different in lengths or strips and in boxes of strips. So when you actually go pick up your floorboards, um, you'll actually pick up a number of boxes or get it delivered to you. What you need to do in your planning, you need to decide the type of material you want for your floorboards. So you can go as cheap as approximately $20 uh, a square meter, um, which is more the laminate style floorboards. Uh, they're not as um, robust or resistant to water and wear as the more hardwood floorboards. This is a bamboo floorboard. Um, it's probably one of the most hard wearing floorboards um, and resistant to water also. Obviously you can't pour water on your floorboards. Um, it could saturate through the board and cause swelling but this is one of the better ones and usually costs around sixty dollars a square meter and your other major part um, so you have your underlay you have your floorboards and then you have your skirting now your skirting you can pick up from your local hardware store um, there's different styles of skirting which you can get. Uh, the skirting really is laid at the end around the perimeter of your room and it's to cover any gaps um, at the very end of the floorboard once it's laid. So the skirting also is something you can choose your, your final finish. So um, I've varnished the skirting to the same color as the floorboards that I actually purchased. Now that we know exactly what parts we need, what type of finish we want for our floorboards, all that's left is really to measure the space where the installation will happen. So in this example, I measured three meters by approximately three meters, which equates to three times three, nine square meters. You take that number into your store, your carpet store, your floor covering store, and they will know exactly how many boxes of floorboards and how much underlay to give you. You can obviously get them to deliver it. Um, I live quite local, 10 kilometers was about $80, or you can hire a trailer or a truck and pick it up yourself. 
Okay, so that's all for the planning phase. Um, we're going to go buy our parts and we're going to actually start on the installation itself. So when your floor is clear, you're ready to lay your underlay before you lay your floorboards. So if you remember, the underlay is usually in a roll, which comes in strips. So what you'll need to do is lay strips of the underlay next to each other. In this underlay, there's a little overlapping moisture piece of material. So for each subsequent strip, you make sure that it covers that moisture strip and then you just take a simple piece of masking tape and you put little pieces of masking tape along the joints. You then do that all the way to the adjacent wall and that's pretty much your underlay done. Don't get too concerned about um, the edges of the underlay lifting because the floorboards will hold that down once you lay it. Now that the underlay is done, we're now ready to get the floorboards done. When you start laying your floorboards, there's a couple of things that you just need to know. The first thing is you need to take note of where the lips are on the interconnecting floorboards. So you need to ensure first the sideways lip, the top lip, is going to be flush with the wall so there's no gap on the end. And you need to ensure that this outside lip is facing towards you because you're going to install your first floorboard and then continue with installing your floorboards up towards the adjacent wall. So we're going to start installing with our first floorboard in the corner and then um, what's very important is how you actually cut your next length of floorboard. So what you do, now this is a little trick that they don't always tell you, is you take your next floorboard and you would think normally that you just take a jigsaw you just mark out here, you cut it, and it's going to clip in. That's definitely not going to work. And the reason for that is you'll actually cut off the lip that overhangs and connects them to the floorboard. So here's the little trick. You notice that there's two surfaces on the floorboard. You get the smooth surface, which is the top, and the rough surface, which is the bottom. So with the lips facing outwards, what you do, you turn it over, and you rotate it around. So turn over and rotate it around and line it up against the wall next to your first floorboard that you laid. You then take a straight edge or a ruler, you mark where the first floorboard ends, excluding the lip. Make a mark. And you will then take this piece and you'll use your drop saw or jigsaw uh, to cut it. And what you will then find, you'll be left with a piece which fits exactly into that slot and still has the lip to for the interconnection. You then use the remainder of your floorboard and you use that as the start of your next row. So let's go and cut this piece we have measured and I'll show you how that works. So I've just finished cutting my first floorboard for the cut in the corner. Uh, what you'll notice, because we turned it over and rotated it, we still have our interconnecting lip to connect into this board. We have a flush edge for the wall, and we still have this lip facing outwards for our next floorboard. So here goes. You literally put it in like that, give it a push, take it in as before. So now when you move on to your next row, you will use the off cut from the previous cut so you don't waste any floorboards. So we'll then put this in place. And then we'll continue the process as we did before. We'll take our next floorboard, we will measure, rotate, turn it around, put it in place, and when we have that strip ready, We'll take that row and we'll connect it into the previous row. So this is how you do it. Take your floorboard when the row's ready. You push, you give it a snap, and that connects it very nicely. So that's really it. You continue this all along. 
By using those offcuts from the previous row, what it does for you automatically is you don't have to worry about any um, patterns forming on your floor. There will be a natural jagged pattern across your floor by using the previous offcuts. Naturally, you also uh, eliminate the having to worry about uh, too many extra floorboards and buying extra because you're really using every bit of floorboard that you buy. So really, that's it. You do it for the rest of the floor. And then when your floor is finished, you then get your skirting, which I showed you earlier. And you will then lay that down on the corners. And that will close any gaps that you leave between the floorboards and the walls. So the floors are all done. They look absolutely awesome. Very happy with the job. Um, got some new ideas. I'll probably do some other rooms because they look so good. So uh, I would recommend do it yourself. It is quite easy. Just remember, flip, rotate for the off cuts and you'll do, it. you'll do it. I hope this has helped you too. Please visit my website www.easydiyseries.com and you'll get a whole lot of other videos that you can use. Please like my webpage too and I'll see you soon. Bye.